Now the clocks have gone forward, the daffodils are out, the grass needs cutting. I actually got to cut some this morning. <laughs> Spring is here again. Another sign that Easter is upon us is springing up in the streets up and down the region, the estate agent sail boards. There's something about this time of the year that makes people want to move on. Our business correspondent Richard Bond reports. Nice and big, we call it our party room. Right. Um, sort of lovely real fires in the fireplace there and uh, we've had lots and lots of people in this room as you Very can imagine. Nice, yeah. Kate Baker has just put her family home on the market. It's a four-bedroom property, part of a barn conversion in the Cambridgeshire village of Yelling. The asking price, £475,000. We moved here when we were a couple. We now have four children. So we're really looking, now the boys are growing up, we're looking for somewhere that's a little bit bigger uh, and that we can kind of spread out into... The estate agent handling the sale has noticed a big change in the market this year. Our listings are up something like 40% compared to last year and uh, my guess is that's because people have been putting off their move for the last 18 months or so. Last year house prices rose, which was a big surprise, what with the recession and rising unemployment. It was put down to a shortage of properties. Now that's changing, will there be enough buyers for all the extra houses? If not, will prices go into reverse? Aidan Branch is an estate agent in the Waveney Valley. His firm has seen a 50% rise in instructions, or properties being put on the market. We need more properties on the market to satisfy the demand that is currently there. If we get a vast increase in new instructions, then we might see that that causes, simply because of the supply and demand equation, it might cause a little bit of settling back again on prices and a slight readjustment downwards. The average house price in the East is £162,000, up 12% on a year ago. Prices are expected to fall this year because of the election and the austerity measures which will follow. Sellers had better make the most of springtime optimism. Richard Bond, BBC Look East, Cambridgeshire. And if you're not trying to sell your house this weekend, there's plenty of football to go and see. There's a lot at stake. That's a great link. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not trying to sell your house, you've just you've got to stay in all weekend. Norwich City are very close to promotion. Peterborough could be relegated. Here's Tom Williams. Thank you. Where to start? Let's go with Good Friday's fixtures. These are the matches in League One. Colchester, whose automatic promotion hopes are fading after going six games without a win, go to Exeter. Norwich travel to Tranmere. The Canaries with an 11-point lead at the top after their terrific win over Leeds. What chance they could just take their eye off the ball tomorrow, playing a side in trouble? No, because they've had it for weeks in the end. I think the, the feeling of people saying that you're going to do it and... So, uh, no, I don't imagine complacency will, will creep into it. You will have to earn the right to beat uh, Tramir up there. So, um, yeah, and then we have to go again on Monday. Also tomorrow, one game in League Two, Northampton, who are just outside the playoffs, go to Grimsby. A penny for his thoughts, Ipswich boss Roy Keane. The club this week issued a statement saying they're fully behind the manager and that he'll be in charge as usual against Reading on Saturday. But the pressure's building. And spare a thoughts for Peterborough United. 13 points adrift at the foot of the championship. They'll be relegated if they lose at home to Newcastle and other results go against them. I haven't looked at all the permutations and uh, I haven't really come into my mindset. We know at some point that it's likely to happen. Um, but it's not coming to our thinking. We're purely just concentrating on Newcastle, their players, and how we want to go about our business and make sure we're competitive and we're putting a good show. And two games in League One on Saturday. MK Dons in ninth tackle fifth place Charlton, while South End will be looking for a win against Yeovil to haul themselves out of the relegation zone. On to golf, she first picked up a club age two, won her first competition at seven, and now at the grand old age of 14 is beating the professional. Kettering's Charlie Hull wants to become world number one, and the way she's going might just have a chance. Jonathan Park reports. You've heard the expression stardom young. Well, it describes Charlie Hull's golf career to a T. The first time I went on the golf course when I was about four or five, and then got a member of a golf club when I was about six, seven. Lickie's first caught up with a nine-year-old Charlie five years ago. She's just become national ladies' champion at Turnbury. 24,000 women of all ages entered, but it was Charlie who beat them all. Very good. Well, I don't think you knit it much better than that, Charlie. Before the rain came at Woburn today, Charlie was doing what she does best, hitting balls long and true. 
Experts feel she can go all the way. I think what separates Charlie from everybody else is that uh, she, she just has an, a, a fantastic natural ability. You know, she's very, very gifted, extremely talented, and um, she's very dedicated as well. She puts a lot of hard work into her game. Charlie's just won the Leverett, the first of the ladies' amateur championships of the season. Dad Dave was by her side, but is far from the pushy dad, you might imagine. You've got to encourage her, but, uh, well, you try to hold her back, but it's her that wants it. She's the one that's doing the pushing. You know, I had to keep finding on the golf course at night and saying it's time to go home. So uh, while she keeps doing that, it's up to her what she wants. Just win. I try and win every tournament that I play in. That's, that's as big as you can go, isn't it? And what, what do you want to do? What's the highlight? What's the, what's the, what's the goal? Um, be world number one, that's what I say. Yeah, possible? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. The worrying thing for Charlie's competitors is that she's getting better by the day. The pros have got four years before she joins their ranks. They better make the most of it. Jonathan Park, BBC Look East, Woburn. Some rugby news, Northampton Saints prop Swane Tongawe has signed a new three-year contract. He's decided not to join their premiership rivals, Saracens. And don't forget, BBC Local Radio is the best way to stay up to date with the sport over the Easter weekend. Just one extra game to mention to finish. The top two in the Blue Square Premier, Stevenage and Luton, play on Saturday. Live coverage of that one on BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. Now, it should really be smell vision because <laughs> we have got the most wonderful scent coming off. These are hyacinths, of course. It's her knowledge of flowers that keeps me so happy, <laughs> actually. <laughs> they smell good, that's what matters. They, yeah. It's a very special hyacinth. It's a blue diamond, and it's only grown in one place in the world, Water Beach in Cambridgeshire. And it's grown by one man, a man with a passion. His name is Alan Ship, and he has the biggest collection of hyacinth bulbs in the world. I always describe it as a paying hobby, in that um, I've got the hyacinths, I'm saving them from extinction, a conservation project, I've got the beauty of seeing them, meeting the public when they come to visit, and at the end of the day make, and I'm not exaggerating, a little bit of money for myself. You don't really expect to find a world-renowned collection down a bumpy track in the middle of nowhere. But here it is. Alan Ship couldn't make conventional crops pay, so he tried hyacinths. Now, he has 180 varieties and is the only commercial producer in the UK. So this is the world's, the world's best hyacinth collection. I like to think so. It is certainly, numerically, for a number of varieties, it is the world's largest by a long chalk. You see, you should be a millionaire. You should be famous throughout the world. What happened? Um, <laughs> what went wrong? I am known throughout the world, but I'm not a are millionaire. You? Are you known throughout the world? Oh, I Google myself and... Um, well, mainly, some, uh, someone said, I've Googled you and you're, you're more famous in America than you are in Britain. Not anymore, he isn't. Step forward, Alan Ship, a modest man, a lover, a collector of the hyacinth, and a real garden great. Mike Liggins, BBC Look East, Water Beach. A lovely man. Fantastic. Yeah. What a lovely sight as well. Terrific scent in this in this office. All we need now.